Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover Warren Twenty here, and I'm, and um, yeah. Before I get started, um, I've changed my background. Like, look at that. Those are all the posters I printed right there. I got Turn the King, Terminator, Ghostbusters, Matrix, Dark Knight, King Kong, Cord. All right, record. Hellboy Two, Golden Army, Saw, Gremlins: The New Batch, Gremlins. Crank High Voltage, Crank Gamer, and then the poor ones, The Devil's Rejects, all three of the Hatchet movies, and Hardcore Henry right there. Still usually the same background, and of course, you, I think you've seen those three already. I don't need to mention them, but yeah. I renewed my background after getting now 93 subscribers this morning. I decided to change my background. So yeah. But anyways, it's Movie Lover Warren 20 here, and today's video is the fourth it's the fourth and final horror list for now that's inspired by horror lord hellhound aka horror metal and much like with the previous three this time it's some um, the follow-up to my top 11 worst horror sequels that i did yesterday if you want to go check that out this time it's going to be the top 11 best horror sequels we all know that a horror sequel usually sucks a lot of them usually suck but this list shows that there's a rare time a horror sequel can actually be good if it's done in the right hands and done with actually directors who care. But anyway, before we get started, like usual, on the real list, let's get on with the honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, 1986. This movie I find very underrated. I think it's the best of the sequels. That the original movie got. And people are like. I don't really like this movie. It tries to be way too funny. Too over the top. Like. Yeah. But it's at least it's a horror movie. Unlike a certain freaking other Texas Chainsaw movie. Called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Next Generation. They think this movie's bad. But go watch Next Generation. And then come back and come back and think I'm still wrong to call this movie a good sequel otherwise. I mean, I like that this movie tries to go much more, a little more different unlike the first one. I like they try to go a little more goofy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the ending is a little abrupt. The chainsaw fight at the end is too short and, um, but, but there's still good qualities. I mean, late actor Dennis Hopper gives a pretty good performance in this film and, and well, yeah, I think I think of all the follow-ups it got, the original movie got, this one would probably have to be the best, along with Texas Chainsaw 2003 and Texas Chainsaw The Beginning. And then this, I mean, honorable mention number, second honorable mention, Saw 2. Now, like Texas Chainsaw 2, definitely the best of the sequels, some even consider it their favorite of the series. Here's why it's still a great film, like, I mean, the original first one's still better, guys, but... Here's why this is still a good sequel. This one we get to know more about John Kramer, we know more about Jigsaw, how he became Jigsaw. That was actually very nice and very very creative. Donnie Wahlberg actually gave a pretty good performance as Eric Matthews and stuff. And their gas house game was very creative. I like that there's kind of more people this time around, and like I like the first one where it's just really two people playing the one game in the movie. This one it's about I think around like six or eight or so playing the nerve gas house game. And it's got a pretty cool twist, cool plot twist, much like the first film, leading into Saw 3. And then, final honorable mention, Hatchet 2. Okay, this one I find my favorite of the series. It's one of the rare horror sequels I like better than the first one. They double on everything in this movie. I like that it doubled on the kills, double on the gore, like doubled on all the vulgar content. Really done the right way, and it actually... And you actually, you know, like with Saw 2, you actually know why Crowley was born all deformed. I kind of like how they expanded on the Crowley story a little bit. It, it's even got my favorite kill in the series, the Chainsaw Kill. And also, Tony Todd's character, who was just a cameo in the first one, gets a much bigger role in this, role in this film. And I actually thought he gave a pretty good performance in this, in this film the most. Now, let's get on with the real list. Now that we got the honorable mentions out of the way. So... Number 11 would have to be A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. 
this is the one that's set in the mental in the hospital with all the patients and this is probably the second best of the Elm Street movies along with top three best would be first one Dream Warriors and New Nightmare those are the three best ones because it's got this great soundtrack balances horror elements and horror elements and comedy done right I think this one has the best comedy there's great personality development from each of the characters and iconic and unforgettable quotes and um, Nancy Thompson comes back in this movie because honestly seriously Dream Warrior should have been Elm Street 2 not Freddy's Revenge Freddy's Revenge may not be as bad as like uh, 5 Freddy's Dead or Elm Street 2010 even but it's still a really garbage sequel. Like, Elm Street 2 just rehashed the first one with a different lead protagonist, basically, and just randomly gave Freddy too much powers. And this one, it finally goes back to the first one. It feels like a proper sequel to the first one. Like, you could just skip Freddy's Revenge, and you wouldn't even miss a thing. So yeah, this one should have been Elm Street 2. 2. Especially the Wizard Master scene was also hilarious. I mean, the CGI is still awkward at times, but... It's still a very, still a pretty good follow-up. And then number ten would have to be this one would be kind of weird. Uh, Friday Thirteenth Part Six, Jason Lives, and you're probably like, but Friday Thirteenth Final Chapter is better. Why didn't you put that one on? That one's still good, but I like this one better. This one's like because they make Jason Voorhees more terrifying. This one, Tommy Jarvis is still a great protagonist. Megan Garris is a decent love interest, and. There are a few creepy moments, and kills and gores are well executed. Its writing is pretty well done. Opening is very gripping and tense, and there's, like how they add, I like how they kind of poke fun at this one. They kind of poke fun at all the cliches. And this one, and the, especially the humor, is very well timed and funny. Fun factor is pretty funny. It's like, this movie's all like, you know what, let's just have fun with this one. Like, we can understand the cliches, let's have a little fun with them with this one. And they do it perfectly in this movie, and... It is a good way, very good way after Friday 13th Part 5 in the beginning. Really good to kind of save the franchise a lot. It even breaks the fourth fall many times, which is very nice, too. So that was a good bonus. And then ninth place would have to be Halloween 2, 1981. No, not the stupid Rob Zombie shit, guys. If you want, I bashed that on my top 11 worst sequels. We're talking about the actually good one from 1981, the one that's actually a proper Halloween sequel. But, yeah. So, one, a lot of people seem to give this one too much crap, really. They kind of consider it one of the worst sequels ever. Is it as good as the first one? And no, definitely not. Nothing's as good as the first one, guys. But this is still a pretty good sequel. I mean,. Because, hey, at least this one takes place right after the first one. It, they liked how they went that way, which was very nice. Like that they made Michael Myers very gripping and just, and just like, mean and cruel in this one. They made him very sadistic. They changed his tone a little more. Nick Castle kind of played him better, but he was still... The, but Dick Warlock still did a pretty good job. So much unforgettable stuff, especially death scenes and... I liked how this one tried to end Michael's storyline and actually tried to kill him off for real. They originally just going to be... Michael was originally just going to be two movies, guys. They actually tried to leave Michael alone for this movie, but then Halloween 3 Season of Witch got panned by everybody. So, they brought back Michael for Halloween 4 and so on, and now Michael's the antagonist again for all the movies. But yeah, I mean... And it, it did kind of bring some bad qualities, I will admit. Like, Michael and Lori being siblings is probably a stupid idea. Thank God Halloween 2018 erased that idea, but... Despite that, I still consider it a very good, very good follow-up, a very good way to continue the storyline of the first one. One, if you don't look at this as a sequel and think of it as an epilogue of the first one, maybe you'll appreciate it a little better. And then, uh, number eight. Uh, the Conjuring 2. Now... I remember first watching The Conjuring, and I just thought it was okay, really. I didn't think it was really special, but Conjuring 2, I found a massive improvement over the first one. I saw it in the theaters, and I liked it way more. I kind of wish Conjuring 2 were the first film. But then again, they're based off real-life cases, so it'd be kind of weird if this were the first one. But if it weren't, this probably would have been a better first movie to me. 
mean because um, especially like because the demon especially this one introduces good characters like the demon nun crooked man and bill wilkins and the so makeup effects are very realistic looking and and janet hoxton is a very sympathetic and interesting and likable main character many memorable and unforgettable death scenes story is well developed and easy to follow decent cinematography astounding character development and a good musical score by Joseph Pissarro. The act. <sighs> and yeah, visual effects are impressive and bone chilling. And Vera Farm Farmiga and Patrick Wilson still give good performances as Anna Lorraine Warren. And I actually can't wait for a Conjuring Devil Made Me Do It, which is going to be coming out in the beginning of June. So I can't wait to be watching that and reviewing it. Even, I mean, and once again, like the first one, glad that James Wan came back for this movie because if James Wan hadn't come back, I don't think this movie would have been that good. So he was very smart to come back and direct this movie, but unfortunately he's not going to be directing the third film instead. He's going to, instead the guy who directed the crap nun spinoff is going to be directing it, so I'm a little, it's scared for a country to tell him maybe do it, but we'll see what happens. But if there were good films in this series, I'd say Conjuring 2, Conjuring 1, and Annabelle Creation are the three good ones in the Conjuring series. <laughs> yeah. Now, so, now, number seven would have to be The Devil's Rejects. Now, okay. Now, I mean, sure, I mean, it's not necessarily a sequel, sequel, but it's, it's still technically a fall, but it still takes place after House Does and Corpses, so it still kind of counts as a sequel. In kind of a way. I like... I actually love this movie much more than House of and Corpses. House of and Corpses is okay, but... House of and Corpses gets way too goofy and silly at times, so... I like this one better because it actually... It's actually a little more serious. It's more gritty. It's even... It gets even really fucked up at times. <laughs> but... Very worthy follow-up in... In a way, this one... This one kind of changes the tone. It makes the villains from the previous movie the protagonists this time around. This one's about this one's about the villains this time. It's not about any of their victims. So, because this time they're trying to get after the events of the first one, they're now cops are now on a manhunt to kill them. So they gotta go on the run. Well, three of them gotta go on the run after a sh after a shootout at their home. Basically, trashes their home, kills the most of their family members. And so mayhem and shoes. It's very perfect, very good, very good follow up. They expand on Captain Spalding more. We get to know more about him. He gets we know that he has a connection to the Firefly murders. Or this one goes more they go more gritty. They like like how they go a little more Western style violence, in a way more than a horror film. But it's technically still a horror film at times. But with a few little Western action movie elements in there, there's a good soundtrack and. Sheriff Waddell is a very good character. I was actually rooting for him the whole movie. I mean, I like the Fireflies as antagonists, but I really wanted to see them get murdered because they definitely deserve it. Or they're definitely not sympathetic characters at all. And um, it was a very good ending, too, and kind of like how this movie ended. To um, to it's a shame, like, this was probably Rob Zombie's best song. It's a shame after, the, after this movie he went on and directed a bunch of bullshit. If you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, yeah, Devil's Rejects would be number seven. And number six would have to be Scream 2, which is once again directed by Wes Craven, one of the few sequels he has involvement in. <clears throat> Definitely one of slasher films that managed to have a fantastic film than its predecessor. Ghostface is back once again to terrorize and murder more civilians in a town of Woodsboro, and he's still a funny, scary villain at the same time. A good references from previous horror films are non-horror films, even and still retains the charm and charisma of the first movie. And this movie really says it best. The message best. Sequels suck. This one, like, makes fun of, like, certain bad sequels that just retake the same elements of their processor. And this, this movie really does... I mean, yeah, this movie kind of rehashes the first one at times, but... This one really does it well. It's kind of meant to be a rehash. You're not really supposed to take this movie seriously. Like, Scream's meant to be like a parody of certain horror movie cliches. All the films are. Kind of a way, and that's why... 
it's, it's they're still horror films, but they can also kind of poke fun at horror film, other horror films that just do bad cliches after one another. So, yeah, and um, it's still a wonderful soundtrack here and there, and um, and this time we know more of the suspect that got accused in the first film, Cotton Weary. We get to know more about him, and that was actually pretty nice. I actually also loved Lee Schreiber's performance. Really wish, shame they went, Scream 3 went the stupid cliche like with Friday 13th Part 2 and then just killed them off at the beginning. And, and also did the Hostel 2 cliche, if you know what I'm talking about, but... Yeah. Number 5. The fifth best horror sequel would have to be Record 2. Or Rec 2, or whatever you want to call it. I call it technically Record because... Technically, Rec is short for Record, but... On to record two. Why is this? Because it has a very good premise. It's got a clean of crew being sent in to clean up the mess caused by the events of a disaster, which is really unique and is, which is only replicated a few times. It introduces some new gimmicks as well, like new locations that appear only in darkness. I even love how this movie has still the same plot, but it's played from the perspective of two different groups of protagonists. Like, first perspective is played from a whole SWAT crew, the other subplot is played from the perspective of these teenagers, who basically stupidly put themselves in this whole situation. And half parts of the movie play out through police cameras and so many memorable kills and jump scares like the act boy in the previous film attacking the G GEO team from the ceiling. Ceiling, and there's, so many, there's definitely good characters in this film and uses a lot of practical effects and little CGI, and even if CGI is used, it's blended really well into the practical effects. The sniper scene, which was in that garbage remake, Quarantine, actually, actually took inspiration from that scene and used it much better in this movie. Like, but now, I mean, there's still bad qualities. I mean, the first one is still way, way better by a hair. Because, well, the teenagers did make some dumb decisions because they went back in to get that doll. They should have just evacuated the building and they wouldn't have died. I mean, some scenes are also a little hard to view as a result, as the movie is kind of dark, then again, it takes place inside a dark building. But back onto the good qualities. There's a really good, shocking reveal at the end of the movie. With one character that they find. I'm not going to reveal who it is, for those that have not seen any of the movies, guys. But, very iconic, very great twist, very great twist about as shocking as the twist in Saw 2, as well. So as well, it's a perfect way to end the movie. And number four would have to be 28 Weeks Later. Now, like Record 2, I still prefer 20 Days Later. This is definitely not better than 20 Days Later, guys. 20 Days Later is a masterpiece. It's one of the best zombie films of all time. But... This movie is still pretty damn good. <laughs> because um, this one has, like, one of my favorites. We know they, this movie expands more on the other survivors. Virus of the whole outbreak. We don't just focus on the same characters from the first one. We get to focus on more characters. They kind of focus more on the rest of the world. Now, the rest of the world's kind of dealing with the outbreak. And I like how this one... How this one takes place after was supposedly the end of the outbreak. Except, however, it's now just, but now it just gets started again, and now it, like, takes place in a whole facility, or... Yeah, like... Like, even with Order Restored, the war against Infection 1, the army steps in to help repatriate mainland Britain, but one of the... And one of the refugees that's sent to that base carries a terrible secret that threatens to reignite the deadly explosion at Bloodlust, Carnage and Chaos, so... Yeah, and I, especially I really love the opening scene. Scene with the chase. The opening chase scene, that's definitely one of my favorite scenes in a horror movie ever, and I love the music that plays during it. Definitely a very, very perfect way to open the movie up. I mean, yeah, it's still... Definitely not first one great, but it's still a really good sequel, a really good way to continue the storyline of 20 Days Later. Shame we never got a 23rd installment, but... Around 2018, Danny Boyle has 
rumored to be talking about a third installment, so hopefully we can get a third one soon, because I'd love to see this wrap up. And third place would have to be another one I did see in the theaters, and that would have to be Dr. Sleep. Now, this was a very... When I first, um, when I first heard they were going to be doing a sequel to The Shining, I was like, please, please, no, no. Because here's the thing. I mean, I, yeah, I get the book, got the sequel, this is technically a sequel. Since Doctor Sleep is still a book, but... It was like, yeah, I get Stephen King wrote a sequel to the book, but... Can we just leave the Stanley Kubrick movie alone? It's a masterpiece alone. It should just stand alone as a masterpiece. Just please, leave it alone. Well, it's the best horror movie of all time. It doesn't need a sequel, but... However... Especially considering the fact that this was for, directed by the guy who directed Oculus, which I really do, which is probably a really bad movie to me. Did not like that movie, so. But, despite that, I was proven wrong when I saw the movie. I was at the theater opening night, decided to go see it anyway. I was proven wrong. I came out completely surprised. I was like, wait. A rare horror sequel that's just as good as the first? What? Like, cause sworn, I think I was more hyped for a chapter two, but then I saw a chapter two in theaters and was like, ugh, very let down by that movie. Doctor Sleep was the better movie, definitely. I mean, and you're probably like, then why did you include a chapter two in your worst sequels? Like, guys, just because I didn't like that movie, it's not terrible. I mean, it's still a fine movie, it's just kind of disappointing. So it's not that bad. But anyway, back to Dr. Sleep, guys. I like that it stayed true and faithful to the Stephen King book it's based off of, and even stayed faithful to the original Stanley Kubrick movie. You McGregor did a great job as Dan Torrance like he does in everything else he does. The opening scene really showing how young Dan rode his bike over a hotel, recaptured the Shining, and really love that they showed they showed the effect, the traumatic, horrific event, effect. The events of The Shining, the first one, really had on Dan Torrance. They really had a pretty bad effect on Dan and Wendy in the, Torrance in the beginning, and they still continue to have a bad effect on Dan Torrance as an adult, too. He shows he really did not move on. Loved how they used the creative twist of the Warner Bros. logo. They did it like old 80s style. The Grey, the Grey Sisters made cameos for this film. The nightmare scenes are terrifying. And Mega Ferguson gave a really good performance as Rose the Hat. A really menacing and terrifying performance. Oh, oh, let's not forget the one moment that almost made me walk out of the theater. The Baseball Boys, or Bradley Trevor. That's his name, guys. Bradley Trevor's, well, a.k.a. the Baseball Boys, Death. I don't think that moment has made me come out of walking out of the theater that quick. And, um, and the cameo of... And there's even, like, before that scene, there's actually a cameo of Danny Lloyd, the original actor who played Dan Torrance in the original film, as a spec, as one of the spectators during during Bradley's baseball game, which was, which was a nice reference to his most iconic role, considering that he had retired from acting, so it was good that he got to make a cameo. The set of the Abandoned Over Look Hotel is incredible. Yeah, but I think the bad quality is like, unfortunately the movie did bomb at the box office, which was kind of because of the marketing. It focused way too much on being a sequel to The Shining, which made newcomers have no interest in the film. And that caused the movie to bomb at the box office, unfortunately. Pretty much became another Blade Runner 2049. Which is a shame. Real shame. Shame. <laughs> Sometimes marketing ruins movies. But, and now second place. Technically this is an action movie, but it's still kind of a horror movie at times, so it still kind of counts as a horror sequel anyways. Don't criticize me for this, but... Aliens. I absolutely consider this one of my favorite sequels of all time. One of the sequels that is better than the first one. Because of everything. 
Like, it has such an intense new tone. Ripley is still likable and strong character, one of Sigourney Weaver's best characters of all time. A roller coaster ride of violence, ex excellent practical effects for a 1986 movie on the Xenomorphs, especially the Alien Queen, and an incredible suspenseful soundtrack that fits the tone of the movie. Good acting from the main cast. Xenomorphs even packed more, much more of a punch than the first Alien movie, because in the first one, it was just one. This movie, it's several of them. Because um, this movie actually changes tones. I like how they go from, like Devil's Rejects kind of did, this movie goes from a horror movie to an action horror movie, like a war horror movie. Which was a very nice tone, especially especially direct from director James Cameron. This is probably his second best movie behind Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Today, because it has some great iconic quotes like, Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> Near the end of the movie when she kills the Alien Queen. That's about to attack Newt. And then, unfortunately, we all know Alien 3 pretty much undid the great ending of that film. But Alien 3 is, like, still an okay movie. I kind of wish Alien 3 were still the end to Alien movie. Alien, really. Alien Resurrection is way worse than that movie. But this and Alien are the only two really masterpieces in this series. Really, but... And now, for the number one greatest horror sequel of all time, one that can never be dethroned, or ever will be dethroned, no matter what you do, no matter how good a horror sequel can be, this is always going to be number one. Because of because it's just a blast to watch from start to finish. That, of course, would go to none other than Evil Dead 2. Just, man, I love this movie to death. I love it even more than the first film. It's the best of the whole series. It's pretty much the Empire Strikes Back of horror sequels. Army of Darkness is also still good, but... I mean, that movie barely, hardly really acts like a horror movie that much, and this one's still more of a horror movie than Army of Darkness, but they're all good. I don't really care, really. All of them are masterpieces, but... This one will always be the best of the series. Because Ash Williams is even improved in this sequel. The first one is a pushover. This one, he's a giant, enormous badass, taking on Force of the Dead without holding back. Especially his chain. Especially one of my favorite scenes where Ash has that chainsaw attached to one hand and a shotgun on the other hand is the most awesome scene of the film. Some amazing acting, a great soundtrack. The demons look grotesque and awesome. And this movie like goes from like a more slapstick horror, like First one's a straight up horror movie. This one like goes more slapstick, but still like has horror elements, and it's not here and there every now and then. Cause um, specifically like there's the laughing objects, there's the fruit cellar, and and there's the ending where that's a perfect setup for Army of Darkness. Every aspect it really like oh yeah in the beginning like there's a recap except they kind of revise it. Or it's just Ash and his girlfriend going to the going to the cabin. So in a way, if you only want to watch this movie, you don't even need to watch the first one in order to understand that like it's still a sequel, but you can even skip the first one and if you just want to watch this. Cause it's cause you wouldn't really miss the thing. It's kind of a revised recap of the first one. The only really but only for the first recap, but other than that, the rest of it still counts as a sequel because then it starts up right after the the first one ended with Ash with the demonic thing hunting down Ash and possessing him. But all in all, yeah, yeah. Evil Dead 2 is the number one greatest horror sequel of all time. And there we go. That's my list for the top 11 best horror sequels. Tell me in the comments below what you think are your favorite ones. And until then, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you like this and want to see more, and then don't forget to like and subscribe to Movie Lover 120.